Do you love coffee and Monero as much as we do? Consider making gratuitous.org your daily cup. Pay with Monero for premium fresh beans, and if you like what you taste, send a digital cash tip directly to the Guatemalan farmers that made it possible. Proceeds help us grow this channel, Gratuitous, and Monero. This week on Monero Talk is sponsored by Cake Wallet. Store, send, receive, and exchange your Monero and Bitcoin safely on iOS and Android too. Cake Wallet is open source, and you always control your own keys. And by Sweetwater Digital Asset Consulting, connecting new money with old money since 2018. And by Change Now, a limitless crypto exchange. Cake Wallet, Sweetwater Digital, and Change Now are trusted and verified by the Monero community. Monero Talk is also made possible from contributions by viewers and listeners like you. And supporting us is easier than ever by typing in MoneroTalk.crypto in your Cake Wallet send address field to send us a tip. This week on Monero Talk. Douglas Tuman interviews Wesley Theis of DecentralizedLegalSystem.com who recently made a splash on our cryptocurrency with the posting of his report on what regulations he believes governments worldwide will begin to enforce with regards to crypto. The two discuss Wesley's research into the Financial Action Task Force and their recent recommendations to G20 on how to approach cryptocurrency and why and how the FATF has so much influence in bringing forth financial regulations in the U.S. and globally, especially considering it is not an elected body. The two also discuss Wesley's thoughts on crypto and in particular Monero as an unstoppable technology and whether betting on Monero in the face of mounting regulatory headwind is sound. Monero Talk starts now. Wesley, thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, so you're blowing up on Reddit, apparently, huh? You're. Uh... Uh, I did. My post uh, went quite quite viral. I saw it was shared on seventy other uh, uh, Reddit. So, uh, yeah, it was quite uh, made quite an impact. I think I had a lot of comments and people were, yeah, some some were calling me names and telling me. Uh, telling me that I was a government agent trying to force the price down and other, other people just thanked me for the research and uh, other disagreed. It was quite interesting. Reddit's, uh, Reddit's a scary place, you know? Um, yeah, it is, it is intense. I like it, but it's, it's weird. <laughs> you want to quickly explain what the post was? I know uh, you made a couple of big posts recently, uh, Primarily around these these concepts of regulation and regulating crypto and where you see things going, but you want to kind of give your quick overview of it. Yeah. So what what happened was that um, a few months ago I came across uh, a post about a FATF uh, new type of regulation, and that's an international regulator, uh, and it created uh, an, yeah sort of new guidance for the treatment of cryptocurrencies. And uh, yeah, actually, uh, some people posted it, but yeah, you get the, the, the usual uh, comments like, yeah, this is just boomers trying to regulate things. They don't know what they're doing. And I thought, okay, maybe I should actually read this. And uh, yeah, when I started reading it, um, yeah, it was quite obvious that whoever wrote it knows exactly what is going on in the space. And they made very, very comprehensive uh, regulations to, uh, to sort of like at a, at, a, at a multinational level to target cryptos and to bring it into the fold. And um, yeah, just a quick background, the FATF is an uh, international anti-money laundering organization. It's been uh, established by the G7. So it's, it's, um, yeah, it's, it's an organization that, that gets its authority from, from a level higher than national governments. Uh, and yeah, they were um, assigned by the G20 meeting to uh, look at cryptocurrencies. And uh, so I wrote everything I, uh, I learned from that report and, uh, and put it on, on Reddit. That was uh, two months ago, I think. And uh, yeah, then a lot of people were also like, yeah, this is international organization. And uh, yeah, who, who are these people? Uh, is this never going to pass in the US and will never, will never be introduced? And then, uh, yeah, about, let's say, 
yeah, a month ago or so, shortly after, I saw people posting that a new bill was proposed. And it was right around that period when there was a lot of discussion about the infrastructure bill, right? Uh, there was a lot of commotion about that. But at the same time, there was another bill introduced and nobody looked at that. And again, I thought, okay, maybe I should look at that to see what it says. And then I saw actually what I saw in the FATF uh, international regulations. I saw that, uh, yeah, for a large part implemented in US bills, so in, the, in this US bill. So uh, yeah, then I decided again, okay, maybe I should just write it up and uh, and put it on la online, you know, and then uh, so that people have an understanding of what is going on. And you recently issued a report that I guess basically explains all that as well, correct? Yeah, that's yeah, that's so, sort of based on on the the two bills, so the infrastructure bill and uh, yeah, the new uh, the digital asset bill. And that's uh, the reason why that bill is sort of like under the radar. I'm, I don't know if you ever looked at, at these bills, but it a lot of it is it says, um, yeah, this section of that law uh, gets uh, gets an additional word. And the thing is, if you just read the bill, you cannot, you don't know what the change is uh, because you have to look at the actual law, put the words in, and then you know what the entire picture. So that's yeah, that's what I've been doing. And then yeah, when you do that, you see the entire uh, yeah ideas behind the law, behind the bill, and what is going to change. And uh, yeah, then then you get a good picture, but it's a lot of work. So that, that's I guess that, that's why nobody <laughs> does it. I guess they kind of purposely make it difficult, right? For the yeah, yeah, I guess so. So the the FATF, the FAF, uh, like you said, people have been talking about you know talking about it in the crypto sphere for a while, mm -hmm. noticing mm -hmm. that they've been putting out these, um, I guess, suggested. Yeah, recommend recommendations. Yeah, uh, on what regu on what countries should adopt as being the regulations, uh, but now you're saying it's it's kind of getting more serious because countries, in particular the United States, are actually trying to potentially adopt some of these recommendations. Um, what, yeah, it is, and, and the EU as well. So it is also already there. I haven't looked at that bill yet, but it's uh, it, they mentioned Fed uh, forty nine times. So I guess they uh, they looked at it. <laughs> I guess, how often do we see the, these recommendations actually get implemented by countries like the United States and Europe? Uh, yeah, almost uh, all of it. Yeah. And this is a real uh, new way of, uh, of, of lawmaking. Or it's, it's, it's not new, but it's sort of like uh, it, it got a flight uh, yeah, for about a decade. At least that's for as long as I've been seeing it. Um, and it's not just in crypto, right? It's in uh, it's, well, it's especially in, in finance. It was in banking. It's in tax law. Um, yeah, that's sort of my my work is is is, is uh, yeah, lo explaining people laws uh, and, and and consulting on laws that have been implemented in this same similar fashion. Um, and the thing is, these recommendations uh, because they come from the highest level of governments. First of all, all everybody who signed up to them, they they are likely going to implement them. So that's the G20. So that's all the Western nations and uh, yeah, places like uh, uh, Japan, things like that. And uh, yeah, what they then do is that, for example, financial centers that don't uh, play along, they get put on a gray list or a black list, and then uh, they can get additional economic sanctions. So it's all uh, the, the thing is because the international organizations they don't they cannot. Uh, uh, issue hard laws that the, 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 the people have to follow. That that, that, that uh, authority is, is only with uh, the national government. Uh, but yeah, they do have ways to force national governments to to follow these recommendations. Um, yeah, so that's sort of how it works. So I yeah, to me, uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm, I'm writing this and I'm talking about it. It's like look, this is coming down the, down the line, and it's uh, uh, yeah, it's likely how it's going to be implemented because this is also in the in the interest of for example, a country like the United States, right? You, 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 when you read this bill, you see it's a big picture. It's about, uh, yeah, it's not just about regulating crypto. It's also sort of like going into the direction of where, where the suit the dollar had. They talk about a digital dollar. Um, so it's, you, yeah, you cannot look at this as, as something that is just, uh, uh, yes, someone come up with, coming up with this, you know? Uh, it's quite serious, and I'm pretty sure that that. A variation of this will be implemented at one point in the U.S. and in Europe. Yeah. Right. It, it it isn't just recommendations because it, it, these things end no, up it, end up having teeth. They end up actually being implemented. 
Yeah, exactly. But uh, yeah, they, it, it, they are called what is sold, uh, They are what is called soft laws. Um, but in order to become hard laws, they have to be implemented in the countries. But yeah, the US in the G20 meeting already signed up to have these regulations created by this organization. Yeah, then the next step, uh, why wouldn't you take the next step, you know? Uh, Do you have any insight into who's behind the FATF, uh, like how, how these how this institution is run, where where they're getting their motivation from to <laughs> up these recommendations? Do, have you made any dis discoveries there? Is this something you know about or are you just kind of also learning this as you go along here? Um. No, I mean, there is a lot of uh, international organizations like that. You have the OECD, um, WTO, uh, uh, so the World Trade Organization. So there's a lot of organizations that have their own sort of like uh, uh, niche, I would call, the way they make regulations for it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure that the people who work at FATF, they are uh, working on these anti-money laundering le legislation and they're not sort of like have ulterior motives, I think. Um, but yeah, every kind of policy tool can be used, right, or manipulated. It's it's always also a bit of a lever. Um, but I have to imagine that, there, there's politics behind it. I'm, maybe they don't have ulterior motives, but they're probably put in there by perhaps people that that do have motives. Well, the, well, well, it's it's as I said, it, they have been assigned by the G20, so that's a. Uh, yeah, that's uh, when, when nations come together and they talk about topics that, that they find important. And uh, yeah, obviously, uh, crypto was important enough for them to have, I, I don't know, they probably didn't have a separate meeting, but uh, they definitely discussed it. Mm -hmm. And they signed off on an assignment to the FATF to create uh, legislation for this, for this space. And then we will implement it on a uh, supranational global scale. Yeah. And uh, so that, that's sort of the way how it works. Uh, yeah, and then that's how we, a lot of uh, laws that are now uh, uh, implemented, they, they are not from from just national countries. That's important to understand because I, I was looking through that inf infrastructure bill and obviously, I, yeah, that's two, two and a half thousand pages. So uh, obviously I didn't, didn't read that, uh, but there was, there's, I saw a few things. Okay, this is, for example, from the, uh, how do you call it? The Paris uh, Climate Agreement. There were some things that I think was from there and, uh, uh, you know, the sustainable de uh, development goals. Um, so there's a lot of other uh, international organizations and, and, and sort of like uh, ideologies that are trying to now uh, enforce uh, uh, hmm. yeah, legislation. And yeah, part of my, my uh, yeah, reason why I do this is also to have people understand that because it's, it, I find that no, nobody really understands where, uh, where the laws, these laws are coming from, right? Yeah. Um, so it's... Uh, yeah, that's part of the reason why I wrote it up. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're coming from legislation that, that's that's passed by people that we elect, but those people are, are receiving recommendations from these... Yeah, well, people we don't elect, so that's sort of the point. We yeah. don't elect, exactly. And, and uh, th th these people, we don't even know uh, who, who works at FATF, so yeah, you get like uh, once a year they have a different uh, mm -hmm. uh, director. Uh, so it's all a bit, a uh, bit obscure, you know. Uh, right, and, and, and their their mission is really uh, preventing money laundering, right? Um, and preventing yeah. terrorist finance. Yeah, terrorist financing. That's been the second. Uh, yeah, that's been added to their. Uh, so that's another thing with these organizations. Yeah, they start off with with, with this, and then they start to expand all the, their authority. Um, and now, obviously, yeah, they they start creating this for crypto. So I guess that's a new. Uh, uh, department. <laughs> um, do you, uh, so they, 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 they just expand, you know, this is not a, this is, this is something that is, that is becoming more impactful in our lives. And um, yeah, in the US, US of course has a lot of cloud. So they, 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 they have implemented a few, they didn't implement a few things that other, other countries did, but, uh, but in the, in, the, in Europe, they imp implement this, all of this, uh, because it's, uh, yeah, even the EU itself is also already an organization that works in the same way, right? Right, because it's uh, above the above the nations. So, uh, yeah. so do you have any insight? Or, uh, maybe this is a, a difficult question to answer, one you don't want to answer. Um, so, anti-money laundering, preventing the financing of terrorism. These, these 
are good things. They seem like good things, things that you want governments to do. But this association, do you think that the people behind it are really motivated just by that? I kind of asked you this already, but I want to ask you. Yeah. Or is is because when you look at it, who ends up benefiting from these regulations, it ends up being banks and institutions, those that are already large enough where they're capable of navigating regulations like this. And then it ends up hurting newcomers that aren't capable. So there ends up being winners and losers. And often it ends up being this, the same winners. Um, mm -hmm. Do you think those winners are the ones that are ultimately behind this, these associations that uh, recommend these regulations that they end up benefiting from in the ecosystem? Uh, I'm not sure because that, it would be a long shot. I mean, this is definitely something that's been desi decided by uh, an agreement uh, with multiple by multiple nations. Uh, and obviously these parties, they do have yeah, diverging interests, but yeah, governments in general, they are, uh, they want to have tools to, to fight crimes. I mean, a lot of crimes, they are uh, solved by looking at the money trail. Um, so for yeah, for governments, is this is uh, yeah a, a very logical step to to target the crypto space yeah with anti money laundering uh, legislation. And I think the FATF uh, organization themselves, I mean, they're just uh, yeah they're just uh, a organization that creates laws and, and tries to prevent money laundering. I, I, there, there's not necessarily something uh, uh, behind it, but yeah, obviously uh, yeah there are other there are people who can navigate this better, as you said, right and. Uh, yeah, a lot of big companies, uh, yeah, they, they don't worry too much by uh, about legislation because they have the, the money to to uh, to follow them, you know. Um, yeah. Right. The, the, the Goldman Sachs of the world end up doing okay. They don't really seem to mind that legislation. Like no, that. they don't mind. And if, if if something goes wrong, they just pay a fine and they can uh, continue with what they were doing. So. Um, yeah, that, that's another thing, right? Uh, the enforcement is, is, is the second step. Uh, you can pass all the laws, but um, yeah. So, but it, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. If you had a thought, go ahead there. Um, no, I, I was basically finished, but uh, yeah, I understand that there is, uh, uh, yeah, ideas, the, the logical idea is that there is someone behind pulling the strings, right? To say, okay, this is where we're going, this is where, we, where we're not going. But once you, See at this process. I mean, yeah, obviously, it is a small group of people who, who come up with this legislation and uh, with the ideas to for uh, to, to to assign an organization to create this kind of legislation, right? But yeah, it's not a pyramid where where there's direct control. It's a very organic process, and uh, yeah, most of the people, in the, yeah, the people working at FATF, I mean, they're just they're just doing their job. Uh, mm. Yeah, it's not not. Uh, Sinister in a way, I think. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, because it's it's a past in a lot of ways, and and yeah, you have to understand. Okay, I, I sort of need because I like crypto, and and I have a bit maybe uh, the, the decentralized mindset, and obviously you have because uh, you have a Monero podcast. Um, but for most people, they look at uh, they also look at this as a very good thing. Uh, you have to understand, especially also in the industry, and uh, if you are a uh, yeah regulated entity. Um, yeah, you want regulations because, uh, or maybe, yeah, it, well, it doesn't matter if you don't have them, you know, if you have them, because you are already regulated anyway. You know? So for you to deal with other people who, who you know are following the law makes it uh, yeah, a lot a lot easier. Um, so, yeah, they, yeah, if you look at, at, at the, through the Monero classes, this is a very uh, dystopian thing. Um, but if you look for yeah, a lot of people like in, in the regular finance, they just should... Uh, I assume this is normal. Yeah. Right. The, the the coin bases of the world probably don't really don't really mind that things like this are happening. In fact, they well, they, they're used to it, and uh, yeah, they, more clarity. They want to be. It makes it easier for them to, to function as a business when they have this clarity. Uh, well, yeah, exactly. And uh, well, I'm not saying that they're they're jumping for joy, uh, but at, but yeah, for them it's just part of of, of business, right? And uh, yeah, if they, they want to be fully regulated, then they uh, yeah, this is have to about by by the law. So for them, not my, not much changes. And yeah, it it, may, it makes also there's there comes a point, as you said, that they become big enough that it's good for them because it keeps out the competition. Uh, 
So that's another side effect, of course, of this uh, these kind of regulations. I mean, it, it can be costly if you uh, uh, want to follow all the, all the rules. Yeah. And so, what what is in short? What is the the gist of these rules? What is, what are they really ultimately trying to do? They're um, I think you summed it up. I saw in your paper at some point they want to change the way the space can operate. Uh, as you'll discover, the regulation rolled rolled out aims to create a system of complete transparency and control. So they, what what is the end game with all the regulations that they're trying to put in place? They're trying to, and then you listed some of the things: peer to peer transactions they want to regulate, stable coins, private wallets privacy coins and privacy tech yeah. um and then you have uh icos and future projects DeFi, nfts etc we could go we could go through some of those things particularly the privacy coins um mm. but what do you is you know just to get to the point what do you see as being really the end goal if these regulations are implemented and it seems like there's a good chance that some form of them will be implemented on a large level globally so what yeah. what will the landscape look like and what's kind of really the end goal with implementing all these regulations yeah so the first thing is uh, what we what we kind of know from what we what we've seen so far right and that is uh, that they are uh, creating strict regulations for uh, people who provide services because that's that's another thing uh, which is interesting and also a bit yeah makes it difficult to see how this will play out. A lot of, almost all of these regulations, they focus on service providers, so people providing a service. Now, obviously in the crypto space, you don't need a service provider because you can deal with uh, at, at the peer-to-peer -peer level, right? So um, that makes it a little bit strange because th these laws are just, uh, they just are a continuation of what already is being done, right, in the banking sector, in, in uh, for for PayPal, for example, and um, and that is to yeah, sort of like to to regulate transactions and to monitor the clients, um, yeah, and and then the next would be sort of like half guessing of what I've read, but yeah, what I think that they would ideally would like to achieve is to have some sort of system where everything goes through regulated exchanges. Uh, and there is already, for example, in that report that uh, uh, you read, the, the first one, they already said like, yeah, they, they already have names for wallets that are not on an exchange. They call it unhosted wallets, uh, which are not hosted on a regulated exchange. And there could be uh, uh, regulation that, that a, they call it the VASP, a virtual asset service provider. So those are your regulated exchanges. They are not allowed to transact with a uh, unhosted wallet. So that is something that could come down the line. Uh, but what it, what what the first stage of this is is to uh, put in regulation to first establish all these virtual asset service providers, and that is what I saw in the in the U.S. bill that they implemented this definition in the, the U.S. law. And uh, but yeah, why would you implement a definition if you're never going to use it, right? So the next step, uh, the next guidance, or maybe this one once it's finalized. Uh, yeah, that, that will determine what these once you once you have established a, a, a definition um, of or of a service provider, then what what will that uh, company do? You know, uh, yeah. So that's sort of like the next stage, and uh, yeah, we can guess a little bit by what what we've seen so far. Um, but yeah, that's sort of the gist of it. Yeah. So basically, to consolidate control among among the the vast and having all transactions going through them uh, in, in a traceable manner. Well, in this, in this sense, I, I wouldn't say it's, it's uh, really a controlled way uh, or yeah, it depends on your look at it. But it's, most of all, it's, it is about transparency. Um, yeah, because if you look at a regulator, you see something what is uh, private and untraceable, a digital form of money that can cross borders uh, yeah, at, uh, in, in an instant. That is something that is totally contra uh, contrary to what uh, the current banking system does, and uh, yeah, then you have regulated this entire thing, make it make it transparent so that you can uh, go after criminals, and then this comes along that is total opposite. Uh, yeah, so that's sort of uh, the way to look at it. They want to see transparency, uh, you know, have transparency. They know where money is flowing, or how, where it's going, who is who is behind it, uh, and that's that's sort of the, the way it's going. 
So obviously something like Monero uh, doesn't really align with uh, what they're trying to do here. So no. do you think they, you know, uh, essentially tried to try to ban Monero or they make it difficult to obtain on exchanges? How do you see them working with a currency like Monero? Well, um, yeah, we already have some ideas. We got, first of all, in that FedF guidance, they, they specifically uh, talk about this. Um, they called it uh, anonymity enhanced cryptocurrencies. And um, yeah, and they, they say, okay, these kind of, you know, uh, anonymity enhanced cryptocurrencies, but also mixers, tumblers, decentralized platforms and exchanges, other types of products and services that enable to allow reduced transparency and increased obfuscation of financial flows. So they, they created this de definition of um, yeah of things that they consider uh, undesirable, and then when I read it, uh, this U.S. law, they actually added to the banking. Uh, it will add to the Bank uh, Secrecy uh, Act uh, the term anonymity enhanced convertible virtual currency. So yeah, that's uh, it's slightly different definition, but I immediately realized okay, this that, that is where it's coming from, right? And uh, yeah, and then. It, it is uh, if it's ad, uh, added to this act, yeah, that is sort of like the anti-money laundering law from uh, of the U.S. And uh, well, it says here, for example, um, require any financial institution to prohibit any person from engaging in any transaction that involves digital asset, digital asset securities and uh, privacy coins, or at least anonymity enhanced convertible virtual currencies. Um, yeah, so if if this uh, is uh, is passed in the U.S., then it's likely that uh, U.S. and based exchanges or people with U.S. clients are going to uh, delist uh, privacy coins. Yeah, so obviously, obviously so many things come to mind when you say that. One being uh, that won't stop Monero, right? That could just make it perhaps a little bit more difficult to obtain, uh, yeah. but it won't prevent people from still using Monero in a peer-to-peer -peer way. Um, so how do you see that playing out? So if, if this were to happen, I'm, what's your what's your take on how that might play out? Um, yeah, that's then we have to go again in the hypothetical uh, sphere because uh, yeah, the, these, this legislation is clearly focused on financial regulators, uh, first or financial service providers, and they, obviously, as I said, uh, uh, you don't uh, you don't need them uh, as a cryptocurrency, but the problem. Mm -hmm is if you if something is uh, considered because this is this is at the same level of uh, structuring or um uh you know uh, yeah money laundering so you have to look at it this this law it's, it's not a law which is for fun you know uh, that they really see this as, a, as something that could hide criminal funds and treat it as such so whenever you're going to want to do something with your monero in a later state um yeah, you, if you come to a bank, for example, and then they see that it comes from a Monero transaction for a Tumblr, they could, for example, reject your uh, transaction. So, yeah, you, you could still have your Monero, but it becomes uh, difficult to use it in, uh, in the financial uh, industry. You know? mm. Yeah. But people using it among themselves, obviously, you, you can't stop the peer to peer nature, but you're saying when then you're trying to work with the traditional banking system is where you would run into some issues. Potentially, yeah. If 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 the if the, and maybe it's good to to uh, remind the audience that it's it's not law yet and it could be amended, right? Uh, yeah. But if it pass, if if it, if it's being passed as Very it is well now, considered unconstitutional. I I mean, is what I would certainly argue. Um, uh, if you're yeah, that, that's trying <laughs> to, ban, to ban Monero, you know, you're you're essentially uh, ban, you know. Code, code is speech, money is speech. There's there's a lot of uh, constitutional arguments to be made as to why uh, you can't try to effectively ban free speech. Yeah, yeah, you're optimistic. I don't, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know enough about uh, very. You know, how, very how it's, that. it's why yeah, I run yeah. for Congress here in the U.S. <laughs> for these uh, uh, <laughs> optimistic point of views. I mean, uh, I certainly don't want to live in that world. I don't want to live in a country that 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 would support anything like that. And I don't see why any freedom loving person uh, would want to live in such a world. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll see what happens with that. And then all that being ignored. So let, let's say you know whatever the Constitution is thrown out the window. 
um, let's say uh, they do manage to implement these these laws and these rules, uh, isn't it? It's it's still pretty unstoppable. Like we said, peer to peer, but then also even inter integrating with the traditional banking system. I mean, you have things like atomic swaps now, mm. where you could. Uh, in an unstoppable way, uh, transfer between Monero and Bitcoin. And we could get into this, but I assume uh, you're thinking something like Bitcoin won't be regulated out of existence. If anything, it might be uh, welcomed because of its transparent nature. So would it Bitcoin always kind of be that on-road or on-ramp to the traditional banking sphere? Uh, you could hold and use your Monero among your, you know, for your own for your own uses peer to peer and then one needed atomic swap into something like bitcoin to onboard to the traditional banking system you know you want to go buy your your house or make a purchase you mm. atomic swap into something like bitcoin uh you know a technology you, you, they can't stop that uh and i don't see how they'd be able to detect that it came through an atomic swap or anything else so how do you how do you see something like that playing out um yeah, so I don't know the exact technicalities of an atomic swap. I mean, obviously, there is something happening on the blockchain. And uh, yeah, whoever is going to uh, uh, be in a financial institution, they might have some software that tracks the blockchain where where it's coming from, and they might have questions. Yeah, um, if anything, you would yeah. get, you know, if I atomic swap my Monero with you and you had your Bitcoin, if I would end up with your Bitcoin, so I would just end up with your Bitcoin that has your history attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, but they wouldn't, you know, in the direction this is going, they wouldn't even be able to know that the atomic swap effectively took place. Oh, yeah. yeah that's interesting. Yeah, that makes it, of course, harder uh, for the regulators, uh, for, for at least uh, the financial service uh, providers to, to know this. Um, but yeah, the, the thing is, uh, we're sort of like halfway the, through the phase, right, of, of regulation. And uh, it might be that, yeah, at one point you might... Uh, not be even be able to buy a house with uh, with uh, money from a private wallet or an unhosted wallet. Uh, oh, so you're saying yeah. even, if you, even if you had Bitcoin, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. It would have to be Bitcoin. Well, the, 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 this is a bit speculation, but but I don't know yet. Uh, uh, yeah, the thing is, first you put something in place uh, as a regulation, and then yeah, then you you can do everything else. So you we have this fast definition. And where there are already, uh, yeah, a lot of hints that they only want transactions between uh, VAS. So they, they, the, the idea behind this is to just create a, a bunch of banks that use uh, Bitcoin to transact. Uh, yeah, so, so it's, it's a total opposite idea of what we look at as Bitcoin, uh, as just being peer-to-peer -peer that we can transact with, with whoever, whoever we want. Um, and that's why it's so, uh, yeah, it's maybe scary or, or at least also so uh, difficult to imagine how they see this, you know, because it's like total opposite of what is uh, uh, what is going on in the space. Everybody just wants to deal with, with each other, you know, instead of just going to uh, Coinbase, we just go to these organizations because, yeah, they're very handy and, and that's, those are the on-ramps and we still need that. But a lot of in the industry, they think, okay, at one point we don't need those anymore. And then yeah, the next question would be, yeah, how can these rules be enforced? Because they're forced... Um, uh, financial service providers. Um, so it's very interesting to to see how this all play out. I mean, if if enough people say, uh, yeah, okay, we're, we're just going to continue with the peer to peer, to peer transactions, uh, then that becomes very difficult to regulate. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. What you know, and obviously you're only the messenger, right? So like you, you've been attacked. Yeah, don't shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> Don't interpret my, my questions or reactions as attacking you. It's I'm, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm attacking the, the, the idea of these regulations. Yeah. And what you're doing is a good thing is bringing it to light because the fact is this is real. The FATF, they, they, they did outline these, these recommendations. And like you said, they historically have been adopted. So this is a very real thing. It's not, it's not super hypothetical. Um, it's happening. And, the best thing we can do is be aware of it, be cognizant, cognizant of it, and react. Whether that means uh, in the United States trying to prevent the legislation from being enacted, you know, calling up your congressperson, uh, mm -hmm. or whether it means 
uh, bunkering down and realizing that you have to go the cypherpunk route, the crypto anarchist route, and uh, rely on the fact that the technology is unstoppable and not be fearful of what could happen. Rather, follow through with the mission, which is opt into to, to crypto if you believe in it. Uh, if you believe in the ideals and you believe that on the other end, we'll have a better world and use the power of encryption to, to fight back. Because uh, at the end of the day, they can regulate all they want, but we know that they cannot stop it. They can't stop it. So I think it's important that you know it's being brought up and that those decisions are then made. And I, I would like to see people in the Bitcoin community more passionate about it. But do you think part of the um, strategy is to make people excited about things like number go up. I don't, I don't know if you've heard that terminology, number go up. So this idea that Bitcoin is built to just always go up in value. It's mm -hmm. digital gold. So if you're, if you're somebody that holds Bitcoin, you look at this stuff and you're like, well, I don't care. Is that, does that mean uh, Bitcoin is going to be worth less? Do you, well, actually, no. It might mean Bitcoin will continue to go up in value because it's essentially going to be co-opted by governments. They're going to be completely fine with it. It's not going to be uh, what we had all imagined originally it'd be used for in this peer-to-peer -peer transactions uh, where you could communicate in an unstoppable way, communicate value. But the value of your Bitcoin is probably going to keep going up because there's really no fear that the governments have of it. What's your What's your take on that? Um, well, I, I can first of all give you the feedback from the uh, uh, Bitcoin subreddit, uh, and yeah, there's exactly uh, there's a couple of people who res uh, respond like this because uh, first of all, Bitcoin be becomes regulated as a commodity, which means that the transaction itself they're not being regulated, but m uh, mostly futures contracts. Uh, so, so for everyday use, the Bitcoin at least is going to be. Uh, yeah, appears to be more uh, usable. And plus, uh, yeah, once you get established as a uh, full, with a full, full regulatory framework, then all the big uh, companies, they, they can start uh, piling in, you know. Maybe they now are the sidelines because they they, uh, they, they couldn't invest in it because of uh, regulatory, t regulatory uncertainty. But maybe, uh, maybe those will now join, you know. So, yeah, I mean, you, you could argue that it's, it's, it would be a good thing for Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, in the Bitcoin uh, phase, there's a lot of people uh, who think more like you and they say, oh, wait a minute, we don't want this. And exactly also for the reason, because yeah, we are halfway, halfway because the, through this regulation. And the next step could well be to say, OK, you're no longer to, to use your own private wallet. We are only allowed to use the exchanges. And obviously, there's a lot of people in Bitcoin that don't want that either. Uh, so. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to uh, to see how it, how it plays out. Uh, what what's your personal take on it? Are you personally uh, aligned with the ideals of crypto, or do you just look at it as an investment? Um, uh, no, I I do see uh, crypto as a uh, I find it a very important tool for uh, yeah the, the future that that is ahead of us. Um, yeah. The, the thing is, okay, as I explained, uh, in 2016, there was uh, international tax law being enforced in a similar way by an international organization. And I talked to my friend, yeah, this is going to be law in uh, in Asia. So we made a website uh, for it. And, uh, you know, so, so there is a way to deal with it. And, and then I'm explaining this to all these people. And, and, and that's how I make my money. Um, and then... Uh, yeah, but but it has effects on those on those industries, right? There's a lot of people that now need regulation, need need to have reports that they, they didn't need before, and it adds to the cost. And uh, and obviously, I've been in crypto for quite a while, at least from uh, you know a, a personal point of view, just interest. And uh, yeah, when I see this coming to crypto, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I can I can sit back, like okay, I can make money out of this, I guess, as a consultant. But uh, yeah, I mean, where is this gonna stop? You know. Uh, this kind of lawmaking, it's now, uh, and I, I'm speaking especially from the Dutch perspective, it's now in the use of energy. We have seen it in the health uh, last two years. That's a lot of international regulations being uh, enforced, for example, from the 2005 health regulations from the WHO. And um, 
yeah, I see that process, and I'm really scratching my head. Like, wait a minute, this is uh, uh, this is not not where where it should go, you know? Because yeah, as we discussed, these these laws are not democratic, and uh, and it's very easy for a regulator to say, okay, we're going to regulate this, but but there's a lot of people, well-meaning people, who put a lot of effort in this, and they do the right thing, try to do the right thing. Uh, so yeah, I don't agree with all this regulation uh, at all, um, but. Uh, yeah, it's not necessarily that I'm uh, going to rebel against it, but I, I don't know. I mean, I just want to inform people what is going on and see yeah. what happens. Yeah. And uh, there's there's uh, a lot of possibilities also within this legislation um, to uh, sort of like maneuver the industry. In. Uh, so I, I hope I can uh, yeah, be a post positive impact in that. But yeah, there are certain things that we need to be re realized that they are not, uh, how do you say that? Yeah, there's going to be a bit of headwind, especially for projects like Monero. Right. And you're sounding the alarm. And I think that I think that's good. So when you look at somebody like me who is taking the approach of, well, you know, well, screw that. Fuck that. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm all crypto. I'm all Monero. And um, I'm going to proceed this way. And that's what it's all about. I'm opting out. I'm, I'm using my crypto. Uh, you know, I'm going to abide by by the laws of society over here, by the laws of the country that I live in. Um, but morally, I'm I think it's you know it's my right to to own crypto, to hold hold my own money, and to essentially use it as I wish. What's your opinion of of somebody like me, or your reaction to somebody like me, or your advice to somebody like me? Is it like, well, <laughs> you can do that, but it, but it's it's utterly foolish, or how do you view that? Well, I, I kind of uh, yeah, I, I I agree with it in spirit, right? Um, yeah, a lot of what is going on nowadays, sort of like taking as a way of being able to make our own decisions, and uh, I think that's totally wrong. And uh, yeah, crypto really gives people a chance just to, uh, yeah, for, for, yeah, peaceful interaction with each other around the world at low cost and high, high, lightning speed. And uh, yeah, I don't see what, what could be wrong with it. Um, yeah. And in your position, as you say, like, I, I just going to make a stand. Yeah. Okay. Obviously I'm not going to do it. Um, but uh, yeah, that's, that's a, a big uh, reaction. I also see from the crypto space, like, wait a minute, we're not going to comply with this. And uh so it's going to be a very interesting discussion uh, to see play out. And uh, yeah, one of the things I do think that Americans are a bit uh, more aware of that position, you know, they, they, they are more ready to take a stand, um, at least on, on things like this. Um, so yeah, I will be happy to, uh, to, to see how it all plays out. I mean, obviously I, I'm not, uh, I'm not with the fat F, so I, I I didn't come up with this, but uh, well, no, I'm just curious what what you, yeah, yeah. you 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 hear me say these things, or you know, if we were just drinking a beer and we were buddies, you'd be like, listen, man, you could you could believe that all you want, but <laughs> what what you should do is this because it's it's going to be a costly decision. They're they're going to win, you're going to lose. Do you look at it that way, or not necessarily? No, not necessarily. Uh, in the end, uh, yeah. A healthy law process has discussion. It's not uh, someone in Paris deciding what we're all going to do for the rest of our lives. Um, yeah, especially if you look at the US, you have the constitution, you have a lot of, uh, yeah, checks and balances to prevent uh, this kind of things. Uh, if it's really, uh, yeah, destroying an industry or destroying your, your private property or your rights to, to build your own life, yeah, then, then uh, yeah, you should have to, the opportunity to to voice against that right mm -hmm. and uh, yeah but, but i'm just uh, i think my role is just to to give you a bit of ammunition or at least a bit of understanding what's going on and uh, uh yeah and, and, and I'll, I'll i'll let everybody else decide how to how to deal with it but uh yeah 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 no everybody's got to make their own decision here you know it's yeah. your future you decide what you want the world to look like you know in, in 10 20 years what you want uh, you know, what world do you want your children to grow up in? But everybody's got to make that decision on their own. Uh, but it is important that people realize that they do have that choice, especially with crypto, you know, that they have the choice to use it if they want to. Um, yeah, and one, one important thing I would like to uh, point I would like to make is uh, that people should not immediately be scared if something gets banned in a certain way or there's a certain regulation. Uh, 
first of all, what we're seeing now is regulation on, uh, uh, on, on financial service providers. And that's, in a way, it's not so strange, you know, because th this entire industry has been trying to play financial service provider um, as sort of like their core game and uh, replacing uh, banks, replacing this, but those are all regulated entities. So it's not strange that a government looks at that and say, wait a minute, those kind of activ activities are uh, supposed to be regulated. Um, yeah, and, and then at the same time, if you if you then take, uh, take another direction, if you go to peer to peer, there are no laws at this point preventing that. Uh, these are laws, yeah, at, at uh, focus at service providers. And uh, the same thing is they, they are, these laws are going to be enforced by private entities. That's, that's another sort of way how this, uh, to me, I look at that a little bit uh, as a worry because private entities, they, they have different motivations. Their motivations are money. Uh, you know, they won't make decisions based on money. So how much it, it costs to regulate you. Uh, yeah, and, and they compare it to how much to just close your account. And I've seen it a lot that, uh, that, that that's, that's increasing, that banks just don't do business with, with people who are in a country which is uh, considered high risk or uh, with people who have too small accounts. Um, so yeah, the whole thing is, is quite a bit, a bit of a mess, but um, as of now, it's still regulation focused on the financial service providers, right? And uh, yeah, so peer-to-peer -peer activity, as long as it's not banned specifically in the law, but we should still continue doing, uh, continue with it. And especially, for example, for um, coins like Ether and Bitcoin, uh, yeah, once they are commodities, then it becomes also extremely difficult for the government to step back, say, wait a minute, we don't, you, you're not allowed to buy, buy them, uh, because yeah, then they already have this designation. Uh, so it's not not all bad uh, that that there is regulatory clarity. It also provides some certainties, and uh, there are some uh, I wouldn't say loopholes, but there could be some big opportunities for the next step of decentralization. Uh, what I'm trying to uh, uh, sort of like write a report. I'm, I'm going to write a report on that. I'm sort of to try to envision how that uh, that could work. So I, I would take the different approach to you that yours more like, yeah, okay, screw the government, I'll do my own uh, thing. But uh, I, I'm always obviously looking for the opportunities within the law. And uh, there is a lot of them there also. So uh, yeah, this this battle is far from over. That's, uh, that's for sure. Yeah. Um... So we, we, we talked about the fact that, you know, Monero essentially is unstoppable. So this idea that regulators may want to entice uh, VAS to essentially accept Monero and, and deal in Monero so that at least they can gain some heuristics, some knowledge of who is interacting with Monero, who's obtaining it as opposed to just pushing it into, into the edges of, of, of the crypto sphere, uh, essentially providing it so that they can gain some knowledge of who's using it. What do you think of, of that theory that's often passed around that they may want to move in, regulators may actually want to move in that direction if their goal really is you know, anti-money laundering, uh, uh, preventing the financing uh, of terrorism, maybe this is a way where they can gain more data on who's interacting mm -hmm. with these protocols. Well, I can only tell you what is in the proposed bill that's currently, uh, yeah, introduced in Congress, and then they quite clear they say it's, uh, yeah, to prohibit any person from engaging in any transactions. <laughs> so. Uh, yeah, for if if you are a uh, exchange and you read that, yeah, it, it's there's only one conclusion: you cannot deal with these cryptocurrencies uh, that are going to be defined as these privacy-enhanced uh, cryptocurrencies. So I don't, yeah, sorry, I don't support that theory. Uh, okay, just seems like a bad strategy, though, right? Uh, if you if you actually had these goals, why would you try to push these things to the fringe where they're then just used anyway, but now you really have no idea what, what's going on in that ecosystem and no control over it. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a good uh, good question. But uh, yeah, there's this saying, right? If 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 you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, and uh, it applies to this as well. I mean, yeah, they've been regulating uh, banks this way, and they have been very successful in uh, cutting out uh, countries that are not cooperating, cutting out certain uh, uh, activities, certain uh, you know, like uh, tax planning, all that kind of stuff, and uh, or sorry, tax uh, tax evasion. And uh, yeah, and, and also to to fight crime. So I mean, obviously that tool they're going to apply to uh, to crypto as well. And uh, but yeah, the the, the 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 main question is, yeah, crypto is so different that uh, from traditional banks that there's going to be a lot of uh, yeah unintended consequences, I guess, for that for their perspective. Uh, because yeah, exact, exactly as you said. Yeah, if Monero can be uh, exchanged anymore on a yeah on, on a normal regulated on ramp, um, uh, yeah, then at that point uh, it's going to go dark because you cannot trans, uh, track transactions anymore, and uh, then it could be become uh, yeah a dark currency, I guess. So so yeah, it's it's a bit difficult for me to uh, if they have anticipated that, and also if uh, yeah if the Monero uh, crowd is really going down that direction. I mean, it's it's a bit hard to, for me to see where that will be going, but uh, okay, yeah. So we talked about the fact unstoppable potentially. It might be you know unconstitutional to try to ma you know mandate these things in the United States. I would just the fact that it it's it's just completely um, contrary to how cash has traditionally been dealt with. Uh, Cash is something that's existed for quite some time. It's something yeah, yeah. That people are, are are used to handling. Banks have been handling it forever. You know, I could go to my bank. I could take out a thousand dollars, a few thousand dollars, uh, and then after that, nobody knows how I use it, what I do with it. It's not tracked and traced. Whereas the direction we're heading with this regulation is essentially people will be tracked and traced from the point at which they, they remove their crypto from an exchange, seeing that things like Monero might potentially be regulated out of existence and things like Bitcoin, which are traceable, will still exist. Um, so then their you know, cash no longer effectively exists anymore. And why are we why are things being treated differently than than in the you know traditional cash system? Yeah, that's a good point. Um... Yeah, in a lot of ways, uh, using cash is also already being discouraged, right? I mean, th this whole, uh, yeah, this sort of this mindset of needing to control and to monitor everything is not just in the money space. It's it's now every day. Look at the tracking apps that people are now using. Uh, uh, yeah, th th this is sort of like a part of a more global mindset of of yeah governments having the idea that they need to monitor things more, more closely because it's possible with technology. Um, yeah, and obviously we have had uh, millennia of people just paying each other with uh, with whatever money that they had, and yeah, it's not it's not a bad thing. Um, so yeah, that's it is totally contrary tr contrarian to to how we've lived for our forever. And uh, yeah, I mean, it's not my idea to to have this also uh, you know so monitored and uh, and. Uh, yeah, regulated, but yeah, it seems to be the, the way the world is heading. Um, yeah. You mentioned, too, that I guess uh, it's going to be uh, about uh, assessing risks to things as well, right? So um, somebody that mm. using privacy coins or is using privacy tech or their something like Bitcoin yeah. could be assessed... Uh, a higher risk than a user that's not using those tools. Yeah, yeah, but that's already being done. Uh, so that's a risk-based approach. So every financial institution, they are forced to uh, to monitor whatever their clients are doing. So your regular banks already has a risk uh, profile. I think, for example, one of my banks once mentioned I was on level three, uh, which means uh, yeah, sort of higher risk, I guess, um, because of just maybe I they saw some money going to exchange or I. I'm abroad a lot or things like that. Uh, yeah, so so this is already done. So that's, that's what I'm saying. Uh, a lot of these 
it's just bank regulations being uh, implemented on, on uh, yeah, financial service providers. And then the same thing with monitoring transaction, look for patterns, look for uh, uh, yeah, things that indicate money laundering. Because for example, you get a large amount and it goes to a third party account, which is unidentified. Uh, so there's a lot of things that, uh, um, yeah, that, that that should uh, that they want to be implemented in uh, an exchange. And for example, Coinbase, and I think already have these kind of things implemented as well. So, uh, yeah, that that is. Uh, but yeah, the, 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 the crazy. So now maybe not the crazy, but uh, yeah, the sort of worrying thing is that uh, these kind of databases are going to be uh, more and more linked. And uh, yeah, one of the things is that indeed what I saw in that report is like okay that it could have consequences in the wider financial space. And before a bank could for, uh, look at your transactions and um, then uh, yeah, make a decision in what, whatever they will do with you as a client. But if these sort of like that information gets externalized and then you get that into a, a profile of you and then it's noted that you have, uh, for example, transactions done in the cryptocurrencies and now suddenly you are a higher risk, uh, yeah, that could have uh, yeah, problems for people who want to just normally access the financial system. Um, so yeah, there, there's definitely a lot of uh, potential things in this. This could really go dystopian. Uh, a lot of this legislation, and uh, yeah, that's uh, something we really have to look out for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How about CBDCs, so the central bank digital currencies? Where do you see that playing a role? Well, well, that was one of the. The main surprises I got I got from that crypto bill because yeah as I said it's not law yet that crypto bill and it has apparently very little support so there's a, there's still a decent chance that that it gets a bit frustrated or amended um, but yeah it, there is a section where they're going to amend uh, which is going to amend the Federal Reserve Act and uh, yeah I, I know a bit about uh, the monetary history and um, how money is created and when I looked at that. I was completely uh, baffled in a way, you know, because it, that's something like that, which is so important. Uh, the basis of, of money in, in the US is hidden in, in, in an obscure bill. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite, quite shocked to me. And basically what it says is that the Federal Reserve Board uh, gets authorized to uh, issue a central bank digital card, they call it a digital Federal Reserve note, uh, of which they can create, which they can create, distribute, and recordation of all transactions so a bit of a strange wording but uh, yeah it seems that they can record all transactions um, and I, maybe maybe just it just means that they uh, yeah because they're going to use it uh, distributed ledger technology so obviously those record transactions so maybe that's why they are approved to uh, uh, authorized to to to, uh, to do that but uh, yeah, in my opinion, why would you have something that records everything then 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 not look at the data? <laughs> uh, so yeah, I mean, there's nothing in that law preventing them from really creating a central bank digital currency, the one that we, I, I guess, don't want. <laughs> you know, centralized, controlled, monitored, and uh, analyzed, scrutinized. Um, well, we we don't want it if we're then no longer allowed to use our own currencies like Monero, right? These, these ones that haven't been created by governments that have just, that are open source. You know, I'll, I'm not opposed to CBDCs as long as I could also then interact with Monero. Um, I don't, I'm not necessarily opposed to the idea of them. I, I think they could onboard people into crypto as long as people can then, uh, without too much regulation, be able to interact with things like Monero as well. Yeah. Yeah, you're optimistic, I guess. <laughs> I thought, yeah, uh, no. Go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it, it, it's just the fact, I, I'm just, uh, yeah, for me, it was really something uh, to see that in that bill, like so obscure and something which is so important. And it, it not just changes, um, uh, yeah, creates a digital fed Federal Reserve note, but it also sort of ch changes the way money is, Created. I mean, the Federal Reserve was started as a reserve to provide credit to the banking system, and it doesn't create money on itself. It, it, it provides credit, which then goes into the with the money multiplier rate, right? So the banks uh, then issue credit, and that's sort of like the money in our account. And uh, 
and also the the, the notes and the uh, yeah coins they, they are not made by the federal reserve board and now they they, they get the uh, authority to do that all themselves so they can create distribute and uh, yeah that that's it's also a completely new way of, of dealing with this uh, with the federal reserve i mean what, what's the reserve about it if it's based on the blockchain right uh, so I'm, I was very, uh, yeah, that, that needs to be discussed more in the, maybe with, with people, who, who, you know, economists and, and to see what, what kind of consequences could come from that. Um, yeah, because it, it would be bypassing the, the banking system or would they just issue, do it the same thing? They just issue it to banks who then will, uh, who then will uh, uh, you know, distribute it. It's not clear from this legislation. So, uh, yeah, that's definitely something that needs to be discussed wi more widely, I think. And do you think the idea is that things like, like stable coins get essentially regulated out of existence and then are replaced with these CBDCs? Uh, yeah, so if you look at, the, again, the first report of the FAF, that was uh, clearly uh, stable coins are mentioned as a danger to the financial system. Um, they really, that was, it was also one of the reasons why this whole thing got kicked off was with uh, uh, that whole story about uh, Facebook, right? They wanted to create their own digital currency. It would be a stable coin and they have a billion users, users and suddenly the, yeah, the central bank or whatever the regulators, they thought like, okay, if this can happen, this is, this puts it out of, out of all sorts of control, right? So yeah, that's how, that's when they started looking at, uh, a stable coins as a risk to the financial system. So, yeah, that's also in this uh, reg regulation. It says uh, yeah, that unauthorized stable coins are uh, uh, nobody are, is allowed to use them. That's that's how it how it uh, how it's worded. Um, so, yeah, stable coins are definitely going to face a lot of headwind uh, as well. And then the second part of your question was, uh, is the central bank digital currency? I mean, that's, that's another thing. If you look at this bill, yeah, you can you start to realize you cannot look at these things separate, right? Uh, yeah, at the one country, uh, at the one, choice, uh, one side, you, you take away the sort of like the private solutions that, that uh, the crypto in industry came up with. And, as, and the other side, you come up with your own thing, which is fully regulated and, and potentially monitored. Uh, so yeah, it's it's definitely what we're seeing now is sort of like the way, uh, yeah, the future of money in a way. That's sort of like the, the, the phase that we're in. And obviously, the people in the crypto industry have one idea, and the people in, in the centralized, in the regulated industry, they have another idea. Um, and that's going to come, uh, yeah, to head to come coming years. So we'll, we'll close it out here. I mean, I guess do you want to make a, a recommendation to the Monero community as, as perhaps how how they should proceed. You know, people that hold Monero, that believe in Monero, uh, we're, we're coming up against this headwind, as you call it. What would you recommend they, they do? Uh, what, what, what should somebody do that believes in Monero, that currently holds Monero, that wants Monero to succeed? Any recommendations there? Is well, the only thing that I can say from what we have known, and I, first of all, this is not law yet, and it's going to take a while for this to, to pass, and if it passes. As I said, because I think that it's, because it's from international regulations, I think it's going to, uh, uh, there's a big chance that at one point this is going to be law in the US. Um, but even then, it is a regulation for financial service providers, so it's still not, be uh, illegal to to hold it and to trade and uh, until that is uh yeah don't panic you know uh, there's there's as of now there's still a lot of uh, uh yeah opportunity to to just interact in peer to peer so keep doing that and once it changes yeah then you can uh, come up with the next uh, strategy all right, Wesley, thank you so much. I ever my recommendations, which is to just, you know, use Monero. That that's the whole point. <laughs> Anybody that's that, that's uh, watching this and is is shocked by by this news, uh, whether or not it, it happens exactly as you're laying out here, 
Uh, they, nobody should really be shocked by this. This is everybody knew going into crypto that this was going to happen. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's a sign that cryptocurrency is working, right? That it's actually doing what it's supposed to be doing. Well, I, I had a few a days. I thought I, wait, I, at one point I just sat back and said, wait a minute. This cryptocurrencies has been uh, have been around for decades, uh, more or less. And look at how, yeah, how scared in a way, or I mean, I mean how, how seriously this is now is. It's it, it's really seen as uh, as a serious threat to uh, the way the financial system works, and uh, uh, yeah, that that could also give people hope, right? Because uh, yeah, let's let's look at Bitcoin. It's gonna continue every ten minutes, one block for probably the rest of the century, and uh, everything else. Uh, you know, could uh, fall apart, but it's going to continue, you know, and, and there's a lot of strength you can get from that idea that in the end, uh, yeah, it will prevail. And um, yeah, what everybody does around it, uh, that's their own uh, choice. But I think, uh, yeah, long term, there's still a lot of, uh, uh, I do see the, the future decentralized, let's put it this way. And uh, yeah. It's now just the coming time to see how we can make it happen and, and do it in a positive and, and uh, yeah, in a way that it will uh, go as we want and not necessarily as uh, some people in Paris want. <laughs> Thank you so much, Matt. Thanks for coming on. Yeah. Where can people learn more about you, continue to follow your work? Uh, yeah, I guess on, on Twitter, and I have to write how you say that, wait. Um, so that's just the central dash law. And uh, yeah, I, I just, uh, I will post there whenever I do reports. I think I will write, uh, see, look at what is happening in, in the EU. And then I also come up with, with some ideas that, uh, yeah, what, we, what the industry can do just to keep, keep going as we want as much as possible. Uh, but- uh, That'll be your next report, you think? Uh, like yeah, first the one of uh, for the EU, I think that will do that. But yeah, one of the things uh, for me, it, I, I think it's best if it, once the laws are passed, then we know what we, what what we can and cannot do. Right? Maybe the laws are are really toned down a bit, and then uh, yeah, things are not so bad. Uh, but even now, I mean, there's a lot of things, uh, yeah, that that are could be very positive for the industry. I mean, there's definitely uh, a lot of room for peer to peer growth. Uh, peer to peer transactions and, and just uh, creating these kind of systems. Um, because, yeah, as I said, those are not part of the regulations because that's not never been done before. Um, yeah, their whole goal is to create this sort of like centralized system. And if we just move in the other direction, uh, there's, there's a lot of things that can be done based on this. All right, man. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks for taking the time. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you for joining us on this week's episode. We release new episodes every week. You can find and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, YouTube, or wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you have an Alexa device, you can tell it to listen to the latest episode of the Monero Talk podcast. Go to monerotalk.live slash subscribe for a full list of places where you can watch and listen. If you want to interact with us, guests, or other podcast listeners, you can follow us on Twitter. And please leave us a review on iTunes. It helps people find the show, and we are always happy to read them. So thanks so much, and we look forward to being back next week.